Closing arguments just ended less than 30 minutes ago. I know you were listening. What can you tell us? Well, prosecutors really hammered away at Eddie Ray Routh as someone who uh, was far from insane, someone who's a weird, weird guy with a personality disorder. Uh, one of the prosecutors said that on the day on the drive out to the gun range that uh, Eddie Ray Routh let his true colors show and that, quote, let his freak flag fly. And they hammered away at all of the excuses. They, they describe all the uh, symptoms of uh, psychosis and schizophrenia, that those were simple, simply excuses made by someone who is a cold and calculated killer. And defense attorneys turned around, however, Anderson, and really hammered away at one of the central pieces of, of, of evidence that we've talked about during the course of this trial, and that was the lack of a blood test done on Eddie Ray Routh uh, the, after he was taken into custody. If you, you've been watching this trial closely, prosecutors have essentially been saying that uh, Eddie Ray Routh was in a voluntary drug-induced psychosis that caused him to kill Chris Kyle and Chad Littlefield. And because of that, that does not rise to the level of insanity. Defense attorneys Anderson are saying if they were so convinced that he was under the influence of drugs that day, why didn't they take a blood test? Well, and, and I mean, that's a, a key point because the prosecutors, as you said, have continued to maintain that Routh, you know, had smoked marijuana, that he was in a marijuana-induced psychosis. Um, did his defense attorney seem to score points with the jury on questioning the fact that this test hadn't taken place, no drug test was done? It, I think that's the million dollar question in, in this situation. They, you know, they fully acknowledged that on the morning of, of, the, sh of the killings, uh, that he had smoked some marijuana, had um, uh, drank some vodka and whiskey with an uncle. Um, but all of that was done before noon. And they're saying that by the time the murders took place, around 4 o'clock in the afternoon, roughly, uh, that they, they're saying that any effects of that would have been worn off by then. So that is the question that th this jury really doesn't have a firm answer to. Uh, the prosecutors have hammered away for, for the last two weeks uh, that he was a heavy drug user, alcohol abuse, and that that was a, a much larger contributing factor than any kind of mental or psychosis issues that he might have had. I mean, I don't understand why, if this family was so concerned about this young man, uh, why an uncle of his would be drinking with him before noon, uh, and obviously given his, his mental issues that, that they clearly seem to have been worried about. Did, did the jury receive any special instructions, and how, do we have a sense how long they might deliberate tonight? We don't know how long they're going to go. They started deliberating about 25 minutes ago, so um, you know they have a lot to go over. We'll, you know, we'll, we'll see if it, if, uh, if a verdict comes back tonight. But really, this is a very simple decision. Uh, there are three choices: not guilty, guilty, or not guilty by reason of insanity. And the defense attorney said, "Look, who are we kidding here? There are really only two choices: it's guilty or not re or not guilty by by reason of insanity. And that's where that expert testimony is going to be so crucial, as these uh, jurors will have to go over." and probably d debate at length uh, the, the expert testimony that they received and going over the, the, the psychiatric visits that uh, Eddie Ray Routh made to, to various hospitals, four visits in the years leading up to the, the murders of Chris Kyle and Chad Littlefield. All of that, we could presume, playing a, a, a big role in the jury room here tonight, Anderson. Yeah, Ed Levendero, thanks very much.